Hey everyone! As you can probably guess from the title of this one, we're starting off with a much-needed disclaimer. If you've been through a traumatic incident, you should talk to a mental health professional, because those events have long-lasting and serious consequences, and the last thing we want to do is trivialize anything anyone's going through by suggesting there's an easy answer. There's not. But we wanted to run today's episode on the thought that if the info here can be used in a small way to help even one person get through one thing, then that's worth it. So without further ado, let's get right to the question that's in the title. Can Tetris be used to help treat trauma? Thanks so much to HelloFresh for helping us figure out what's for dinner. For years, Emily Holmes, a researcher at the Karolinska Institute, its Department of Clinical Neuroscience, had been researching ways to reduce the occurrence of recurring intrusive memories, or in common parlance, flashbacks, after traumatic events. Today, this is mostly done through cognitive behavioral therapy, i.e. working through the trauma with a qualified psychological professional to help reduce the occurrence and the intensity of said flashbacks. But then, Professor Holmes had a different idea. What if, in some instances, instead of treating the memories, we could establish methods of preventative care to reduce the chance that such memories occur in the first place? You can think of this like disinfecting a wound and making sure it stays clean, rather than just treating an infection after it occurs. You know, trying to head off a problem at the past, so to speak. And while in many areas of medicine, there's fairly straightforward ways to do this, it becomes a whole different can of worms when you're talking about psychology. But with that in mind, Holmes and her team began looking into disrupting something called memory consolidation, the process by which the brain turns experiences into memories and solidifies them into our long-term memory. Their hypothesis was, in the loosest terms, as I'm sure I'm not fully doing it justice here, is if they could get a trauma victim to focus on something other than the trauma shortly after the initial inciting incident, their brains would switch tracks and not record the traumatic event as deeply or severely. At first, they tried things like making patients answer trivia questions after traumatic events, but that didn't have the effect they were looking for. So, they went back to the drawing board and realized that they needed to account for the intense, multi-sensory aspects of trauma. Simply refocusing the logical mind wasn't going to do it. They needed something that would focus the parts of our brain that process color and shape and sound as well. Hence, Tetris. They started off simple testing people without trauma, and having them watch horror films. Because, as it turns out, horror films can actually give us mild flashbacks. I mean, most of us who have stayed up way too late watching or playing far too creepy things have probably experienced a bit of this at some point. Of course, in most cases, these aren't serious or truly traumatic, and they fade pretty quickly. But that experience does serve as a good analog for the process that causes the brain to create reoccurring intrusive memories with trauma. So they had their subjects watch horror films and then play Tetris. And their early results were promising. So, working with researchers from Oxford and other universities across the globe, they did a study on 71 car crash victims, half of which were asked to play Tetris within six hours of their crash, and half served as a non-Tetris playing control group. That study found that the Tetris playing group actually had fewer intrusive memories over the upcoming weeks, and those memories that did occur diminished more quickly. Another study was done by a group led by Heinrich Kessler and Dr. Aram Kayayan out of the Department of Psychosomatic Medicine and Psychotherapy at LWL University Hospital Buchum in association with Holmes's team on the possible long-term application of such a treatment. They took 20 patients, most of whom were dealing with trauma dating back years, and each week they had them write down a very specific traumatic memory in detail. Then, when they were finished, they would rip up the sheet of paper they wrote it down on without talking about it at all with the therapist, and then play Tetris for 25 minutes. And the results were kind of astounding. Flashbacks for the targeted memories fell 64%, while flashbacks for the untargeted memories continued to occur at roughly the same rate. That's incredibly promising. Now, of course, the sample size here is small as all of the researchers are the very first to point out themselves whenever they're interviewed about it. This is very early, very preliminary research, and a lot more work needs to be done before we can remotely claim with any rigor that Tetris can be used as an effective tool in therapy. But just because the research is in its early stages doesn't mean it isn't worth exploring. Specifically, for a very pertinent reason, one researcher cited when they began to go down this route. They said, one reason that they were examining Tetris as a tool in this space at all is because while many of the psychological techniques we've already established are very effective, too many people simply don't have access to the care they need. 
Because to put it simply, there just aren't enough professionals to treat all of the traumas that life throws at us, and many people don't have the resources or time to really get treatment that would help. So we're simply going through life with our traumas, and from time to time, our worst moments come roaring back to us unbidden. Whereas this, this is something that anyone can try at home, something that anyone can use to attempt to assist in dealing with life's traumas that we can't get treated. And look, we usually don't buy into these sort of things. Often when reading papers claiming games as miracle cures, the science behind them is, let's say, questionable at best. But the more James dug in here, the more he found the work to be by credible qualified people at credible qualified universities. So again, this is far from established. It'll take years before anyone takes Tetris through the rigorous and much needed testing process required to really establish if this is a medical fact. But in case this information can help one person out there, we felt we should share this research and give it what megaphone we could. So with that in mind, links to the studies can be found in the description below. And until next time, please stay well and stay safe. And if you happen to get hungry while poring over that promising research, perhaps you'd be interested in whipping up a delicious meal fast thanks to our friends over at HelloFresh. You know, with the holidays just around the corner, it is quickly getting to be the busiest time of my year. But that's why I'm so thankful for HelloFresh, the delicious meal kit delivery service, because it's been saving me a ton of time by making it so I don't have any stressful meal planning to do or don't have to take any expensive trips to the grocery store. Instead, I get everything I need to prepare awesome home-cooked meals delivered right to my door, and then I'm eating in like a half hour or less. Plus, with over 35 recipes and tons of tasty add-on options available each week, you're sure to find something that'll please everyone. Say you want to go veg vegetarian, pescatarian, or fit in wholesome meals. They get all those covered plus a ton more. Now, personally, since it started to get a bit more chilly outside, this week I wanted to turn up the heat for my taste buds with their phenomenal crispy buffalo spiced chicken. And oh, oh boy, I don't know if you can see it on my face, but that was devilishly delicious. Whereas Jeff chose a quick, tasty, and most importantly, child-friendly meal for him and his family. So he prepared their one-pan cheesy beef tortilla melts, which was so fast to make that he didn't even mind whipping up another batch when Zoe and I showed up for second dinner. <coughs> Let's not push our luck. Ooh, and another thing HelloFresh gets right is their continued work on the sustainability and freshness fronts. Their produce goes from the farm to your front door in under a week, meaning the ingredients are super fresh. Everything is pre-portioned, meaning less food waste when compared to grocery shopping. And HelloFresh is the first carbon-neutral meal kit company, which we just love to see. So if you're like me and want to save some money on dinner to help offset your upcoming holiday spending, now really is a perfect time to give HelloFresh a try for yourself with this delectable deal. All you gotta do is go to HelloFresh.com and use the code EXTRACREDIT60 to get a whopping 60% off plus free shipping. Oh yeah, you didn't mishear that over your growling stomach. You can save a ton of money on meals while also supporting the content you love, the environment, and your grumbly tummy. Once again, that's 60% off plus free shipping at HelloFresh.com using the code EXTRACREDIT60. Trust me, your time and taste buds will absolutely thank you. And once again, so will we. Thanks so much. You know who's just the best? Ahmed Ziad Turk, Angela Valenciana, Arcalite Games, Casey Muscha, Dominic Valenciana, Joseph Lame, and Skylar Holmes. Thanks so much for your support, all.